everyone welcome to notice tonight the show that decodes the region has the law and order situation collapsed in manipur well that's what senior bjp leader from manipur and union minister of state for external affairs rk ranjan said on friday after his private residence in the heart of imphal was set ablaze by a large mob ranjan said the government in the state has failed to maintain order and restore peace despite the center rushing thousands of security personnel to the strife torn state but the big question is how does one restore peace in manipur at this juncture when the maithe kuki divide has widened perhaps like never before besides the state not only has to deal with the clashes between the two communities but is having to battle angry mobs in the imphal valley who are burning down homes of elected representatives apparently because they hold the government and the government leaders responsible for having failed to protect them from attackers now what's the road to peace in manipur can the government revive the peace committee and make it start work will chief minister biren singh pull out of the peace committee to appease the cookies who have a trust deficit on him or will he stay on because withdrawing from the peace committee may further anger the maithis can't he have a peace committee at this critical juncture without politicians will some maithe and kuki civil society groups or individuals stick their neck out and try to talk peace and bridge the divide unless people walk the extra mile restoring peace in manipur certainly looks difficult well to take the discussion forward i am joined from new delhi by ms hoynu hausel journalist and founder northeast stories professor bhagat oinam from jawaharlal nehru university one of the most well known voices also joins me from new delhi and in our studios i have with me dr letkozam haukip assistant professor department of history at the guwahati university and joining from delhi as well is chitra ahantam former editor of the imphal free press currently an independent journalist ladies and gentlemen welcome to northeast tonight i'd like to give the courtesy first to begin the show by going to a lady let me go to you chitra ahantam chitra are you saddened today so many people are dying as far as i am concerned i am i am equally concerned i am only concerned that people are dying I won't like to distinguish between whether the person who is dead or who are dying are maithes or cookies. That is not important. Important is that human beings are getting killed, and the state has not been able to do much to protect them so far. And what are we going to do as individuals, Chitra? Uh, you know, it's it's not just a sense of sadness that fills. I think not just me, but I think it goes equally true for you know. as much as it holds true for oja bhagat also and a lot of people you know regardless of who we are which community we belong to which political ideology we are because we have never seen such uh, vehement uh, you know reactions coming in from either side in all these years of violence violence is not is, is nothing new in manipur sad to say but it's nothing new uh, we have uh you know growing up in the 80s and 90s it was something that knew, that you knew was happening right in your backyard and yet and you know uh, being a part of the media fraternity where you are jetation you know uh, both between the army on one hand and the underground groups on the other you get to see things very very uh, you know uh, up close and personal and yet what is happening right now spilling over from you know the actual to even the Uh, the internet and the social media the kind of hatred that is being poured uh it's very disturbing and also at one point of time you know you were far removed from it as a journalist i might see bodies before me or i might see photographs but here it is being played and replayed over and over again through social media so there is no escaping and so i would say it's not just sadness it's also a sense of hopelessness not knowing where this is going who is going to listen who is going to make the first move but it's it's very uh, disturbing i would say it's very disturbing for everybody right yeah. right uh, uh, turning to you hoynu hausel hoynu who like chitra said uh, it is it is not just sadness it is a sense of hopelessness it is one and a half months now 
exactly one and a half months today for, since the violence began. Now, who is going to make the first move? Is it an ego clash? Uh, my question is, my question is, uh, you know, okay, the, the, the peace committee was formed. We all know that the violence took place. More than 100 people lost their lives. More than 40,000 people have been displaced from their hearts and homes. Uh, you know, thousands of houses have been burned down. Educational future of the education of children in Manipur looks absolutely uncertain. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and and do you think the state can control this situation as it stands today? Uh, who is going to make the first move? Uh, I'm asking about the communities. We have reached such a stage that we have realized that the state may not be able to succeed unless individuals and community groups come forward. Hoinu. Uh, Waspir, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I absolutely echo what uh, Chitra had, uh, you know, had just spoken. Of course, we all put aside a personal sense of grief and loss. And as we look ahead, what do we see? On the 47th day of the mayhem, we are still discussing online what is the road ahead? What does it reflect? First of all, an apathy from the power that be, apathy from people who could have stepped in to douse that fire of hatred. How did we let it happen? Manipur is not such a big state. And uh, we have had history of violence. Like Chitra said, I would like to emphasize and stress upon the magnitude in which it underplayed and unflirted. So much of hatred. Did we ever know that this could play up to be something like this? It is saddening. I am at a loss for words. I am, uh, I wouldn't say I'm hope, uh, I mean, I'm without hope. I do hope that there are some things that are being done, some strategies, I hope they're being worked upon that would appease both the parties and bring to the fore what would be the road ahead. I, I mourn this, the, the loss of future for the students. How are we going to rebuild? How are we going to restore once again? How are we going to be on that map of progress and development today, our enemy is illiteracy, our enemy is underdevelopment, our enemy is unemployment, corruption. Right. Right. But today we are made to feel like our enemies are the people who we have been living with together for over the years, over, 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 over the decades. So I also feel a sense of being misled. And Absolutely. I mourn and I lament greatly at the loss of lives from both sides. When I think about it, I shudder to think how long is it going to take for us to come back to the road of development right. where we, we we were lured that there is something happening in our state. But I feel let down, terribly let down today. Right. Uh, coming to you, uh, Professor uh, Bhagatoinam. Professor Bhagatoinam is a veteran uh, observer and commentator of things in the Northeastern region. I mean, Professor Oinam, you know, uh, what has gone wrong? What has gone wrong? Because we have seen this violence. When, when, when you know, insurgent groups can talk to the government, when insurgent groups are talking to the government and working on a road to peace, let's take the case of the Nagas. A ceasefire is in place for close to 30 years now. Almost 30 years that a ceasefire is in place in Nagaland. Uh, now, this violence in Manipur, we, are, we have seen the Kuki Naga clashes before. There were other clashes, ethnic clashes in Manipur. Uh, what has gone wrong this time that no one is willing to forget and forgive and, and, and face each other and talk? The 10 Kuki MLAs, Kuki Chin MLAs have not visited Imphal since the violence began. So there is a political disconnect between the hills and the valley. There is no face-to-face -face meeting. Some people may be talking on the phone. That's fine. But there is no face-to-face -face meeting in front of the cameras for the people to see that actually people are meeting. What has gone wrong this time, Professor Oinam? See, uh, more the days passed by uh, and the kind of news that has come up, uh, very striking, surprising news coming from different corners, like UK LF chief uh, declaring out that BJP has to come clean about the commitment they had uh, for helping the BJP candidates to win elections. Now, this is a revealing story to me that uh, is all this violence a planned one? That is what I am uh, made to think. Because as you have rightly said, normally when insurgent groups uh, look out to aim to gain certain uh, political ends that they desire, 
uh, normally the strikes is to the security forces or the government machineries. But this is a very rare case in which uh, the civilians uh, were targeted. And uh, even uh, civilians were used as human seal. Uh, I'm making, still I make a distinction. Many says uh, I'm, I'm going soft, but I see a distinction be between Kuki militants and Kuki civilians. And I don't think all Kuki civilians, villagers, poor people there living side by side along with the Maites ever wants a violence to happen. So there are certain vested interest groups that are in play. And even within the Maite community, I think there are some hardliner groups that have come up very strongly now. And that is creating all the uh, havoc. And when violence erupts and people have guns in their hands, the, the common voices, it's very, very difficult to expect them to come up. Uh, unlike the cookie groups, among the Maites, I have seen, maybe I'm wrong, I'm in Delhi, but uh, I'm trying to uh, watch as closely as possible, is that the anger, anger at the level of the people is very, very high among the Maites. Right. For the cookies, I am not able to see that that much. Uh, it happened on the third, the madness, and I believe the third May episode could have been avoided. Some cookie civilians were used, I believe, by the militant groups. Uh, and then the uh, things that happened in Churachanpur and subsequently third, fourth night. But after that, uh, it has been largely the Kuki militants that has been in, 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 in the helm of the affairs. Uh, lastly, if you remember by the episode, 27, 28, when the new parliament building was inaugurated, 28 was the day, when there were strike among from the uh, Kuki Chin group, uh, Kuki militants. Right. Even there too, I don't think Kuki uh, villagers right. were really uh, there. Right. So, uh, so that is what I want to submit. We need to see the distinction. Absolutely. And the poor absolutely. Mixed voices that Absol remains. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Professor Bhagat Oinam, uh, you know, may, you made a very important point. Professor Oinam has made a very important point. Professor Oinam has said that we have to make a distinction between people wielding guns, whether they are militants or otherwise, and the common people. Hoinu Hausel, uh, Professor Oinam has very rightly said, there may be some uh, people holding guns. We may call them cookie rebels. Uh, you know, and, 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 but it is a fact that the, whether it is the Maites, whether it is the cookies, the entire civilian population is, has not joined this madness. They are not killing each other. The entire population is not killing each other. Stories have emerged during this crisis of cookies helping the Maites uh, to safety. Similarly, Maites helping the cookies to safety. These stories we have seen. These are facts. Nobody can deny this. Hoinu Hausal, uh, how do you make a distinction? Chief Minister Biren Singh says that this is not a fight between two communities, cookies and the Maites. This is a fight between security forces and illegal infiltrators. Obviously, illegal infiltrators from Myanmar, who obviously, again, are cookie chain people. That's what Chief Minister Biren Singh's theory is. There are many theories that are coming out at this time, and it is but natural that we tend to look at things from a vantage point of view. But I would like to refrain myself from doing that for the interest of the road ahead of us, that we are seeking peace at the moment. And I, I would hesitate to say that uh, I, I would uh, refrain myself from saying that, you know, some uh, who, who did this or who did that, or these are the civilians or these are the, you know, I would refrain from calling out names. But I think in the face of danger, when it is a question of your life, people defend themselves, regardless of which group I'm talking about. I think uh, when it's a question of survival, we are sitting in our own homes, in the safety of our homes, in a studio. But when people are right there, when it is a, it, a matter of their life, I don't know how they would defend themselves. How else would they defend themselves is my submission for the parties. And we have reached a stage where there is anger, simmering with anger, and for us to be debating and saying, 
uh, you know, to, to sort of uh, on their behalf or rather our assumptions, it yeah. would be a little unfair. It would be a little unfair, really. And also, uh, uh, but I think time now is really to understand what is it that we could collectively do together. And your question about the lack of anger or anger not being manifested in the cookies, from what I understand, there is no, a certain I, I, ethics. No, I didn't, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't say that cookies are not angry. Oh. I didn't say that, uh, Hoino. The was, manifestation of anger, is that what you said? No, that I said that, that Ch Chief, Chief Minister Biren Singh is saying that this is not a fight between communities. It is only infiltrators from Myanmar and the security forces. Is it as simple as that? You know, the narrations have been changing. So I refrain myself from commenting on that because uh, yeah. uh, on, on the day one, two, there was something else. And as the days progressed, there were narrations that, that kept changing. So I, re I shall refrain myself from getting into that. Uh, but uh, as far as the fight, I mean, or as, as far as how the cookie organized themselves, from what I understood and what I've been seeing from where I am in the comfort of my home, I see there's a certain ethics which binds them. One, they do not touch women and children. They don't do, they don't engage in any cold blooded murder. They do not uh, vandalize to the extent that would, and they, th there's a certain ethics that guides them even in the peak of the anger. That's how I am, uh, uh, that's how I, I make out of their, you know, their, their operations. But again, uh, if we get to the point, then I don't think our discussions here will get nowhere. So I would really appreciate and request if we collectively use a wisdom and think what is the road ahead rather than going back and saying, you know, how do how did it happen? Who did what? I think the, 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 the real question is how do we collectively put a collective wisdom together and at least let, gauge absolutely, and see? Absolutely. Let me, let me, yeah. ask, Chit, let me ask Chitra. Now, now, now. Hoinu has said, yes, uh, there is no point in looking back. We have to look forward and uh, we have to put our collective wisdom and find out how we can resolve the issue. But the point is, point I'm asking is the, the divide that we are seeing today, the extent, the magnitude of the clashes, the divide, <coughs> perhaps, perhaps it has never been as wide as it has been now. Now, therefore, it is a bigger challenge. Peacemaking has become more, more challenging this time around. That is my personal observation. Now, do you agree with that? If so, if so, how do we achieve a breakthrough to bring some sane people from both sides together face to face? Is it so difficult? You know, uh, you, you are saving your toughest questions for me, Rasbi. But having said that, you know, uh, Hoinu has just put, uh, you know, one very critical uh, dilemma that we don't know what it is when we are left to defend uh, something that is very dear to you and there's nobody to help you. And that this applies to both sides, right? So that is number one. Number two, uh, and a very critical and very important fact of the matter is that the Meita is by then of being the majority community and being uh, majorly Hindus are now being seen as the perpetrators and the oppressors and hence guilty. Uh, and which adds to a sense of uh, deep rooted uh, anxiety and concern because we are seeing uh, media coverage, we are seeing media narratives. Uh, just the day before uh, I saw a post by Kavita Krishnan uh, where the Indian liberals are now casting one entire community as total hedonistic, total violent, by total oppressions. Here we have Hoinu who is seeing both sides, but a majority of people who are even not related to this issue at hand are cornering the Maitais and painting us as killers of minority groups, persecutors of Christianity, uh, and everything added to it. And that is going to add more and more angst to the Maitais on the ground. And that is why uh, when we talked about all the violence that is erupting, let me also just point out for a fact that all these attacks that has been happening for the past two days, there are reports 
uh, there has been an FIR launched against a particular gentleman belonging to a particular community who set fire to a house of his own community so that it would look like another community had set fire to it. So there are so many lumpen elements that are running riot and yet it adds okay, to now, the major now, media. You know, in the uh, national media, uh, hang on, Wasbir, if you can just let me finish this question. So what then happens is that the Maitais don't have any platform to be heard because uh, the entire community is being stamped as majority, as Hindus, uh, and hence, you know, there is no value to what is happening with uh, them. Chitra, so I you, think that's Chitra, you, you uh, say before going to Professor uh, Bhagat Oinam, uh, 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 you know, you are saying that Metes don't have a platform, but is it is it totally correct because uh, the most of the influential media. Uh, is located in the Imphal Valley, whether it is the print media, whether it is the uh, cable TV channels, which also has okay, a large I'm glad, audience. I'm glad you asked this question because, you know, I have been editor of the Imphal Free Press, right? So, see, uh, where, uh, it's like in India also, you have all the major channels are in Delhi. And then you have what is known as the bureau bureau heads that, that are there in all the metro metros. So this comes from number one connectivity. It comes, it doesn't come from an agenda that says that okay, 10 years ago we didn't decide that only Maitais are going to own the media houses. There are other communities who own media houses and they have their own subscriptions. Uh, there are uh, cable news channels that cater to uh, certain districts. So there are newspapers in different uh, languages uh, in different uh, tribal areas. So there are all sorts of media. Yeah. There. Now we are talking about a situation where number one, there is in no internet connectivity, supposedly, because there are a lot of reports where there are reports coming out that VPN has been has been used because we see a lot of uh, social media updates. Uh, let from, us, let us, I, we'll come to that. No, no, uh, Chitra, that let no, us, let I'm us not, talking about this because yeah, then it let also... Let us not in, stick uh, to this. Let no, us, let no, us no, widen no, I'm, the debate. I'm sticking, I'm sticking no, to the media. Thing. No, so what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that... Uh, if yeah, people, Vaspir, may I just come here one minute? Yes, yes. Chitra, I why I, my, while I agree I with you, no, I'll come to Professor fronts. Bhagat and then I'll come to Chitra. Yeah. Yes, so if uh, I can just why, finish, yes, uh, I can just no. finish. Yeah. 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 because I want to look at this media thing. See, yeah. when if in normal times. No, no. I was only asking. I was only. I, I was only asking a question media, when yes. you said. Metis do not have a platform. Not many people will accept that because most no, of no, the no. media groups meant, are based in Imphal. I meant and in you the have, national uh, unlike, media. Unlike most of the influential media groups are not based in no, 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 no. Uh, Churachampur. I, I was talking specifically about the national media narrative. Okay, let us not talk about the national media. I don't want to, I don't consider it as national media. I consider it, it as the, I, I consider it as the, 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 I consider it, the just a minute, set, you know? let me speak. I consider it as a metropolitan media because the national media, quote unquote, they para drop one or two stories they exactly. do, they, they do and they go back. Uh, so exactly. they are not like someone like us who have been covering the Manipur story exactly. day and night, 24-7. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Hoinu, you make, uh, the, yeah. make your point. I just want to make a point yes. here. I feel that the, I mean, Chitra, I don't, I mean, well, we are not going to talk about the national media. So I would look at the Imphal journalists. They were really at a far more privileged position because they could file the stories from DIPR, which gave them internet access. So I think they were far more access. They had access here even when the people in the hills had just nowhere to, uh, you know, broadcast the stories. So I think even in this in this crisis, again, you know, people in the valley they had they had advantage because they had a place to go and file the okay. stories. I mean, touch with some Imphal journalists, point, so they had internet. We were, point in, taken, were in touch point with taken, them. Yeah. Point taken. Let, let me let me go to uh, Professor Bhagat Oinam. Professor Oinam. Uh, has the present situation gone beyond a law and order issue? Uh, here, both both communities are fighting for for their identities. So it has become an absolute fight for identity. When 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 the uh, the the decks were cleared apparently. When the decks when everybody thought uh, that the decks were clear for the Metes to get their uh, you know community in the scheduled tribe least. There was absolute fear in the hills because they thought that Maitis are an advanced community already and giving them ST status may deprive them of their own dues, which may not be the case. It is the Maitis getting ST status. It is not the question of the cookies being deprived of whatever they are enjoying. That may be the, that may be the real issue. But, but when, when the issue came, a lot of the fear and anxiety among the cookies. Now, now therefore, 
Now it's a fight for identity. The cookies won the identity attack. They said, we want a separate administration. We cannot live with the Metes anymore. The Metes are saying, no, no, Manipur is an integral part of the state. But if you, are, if you consider Manipur as an integral part of the state, that means along with the, along with the area, you have to li also live with the people elsewhere in Manipur, isn't it? You seem to have asked only one question, but it was a series of questions yes. put in together. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, I will answer that linking with Hoinu. Uh, the point she made, and the other day we spoke over phone, and I really admire the way she is moving ahead with the peace initiative, and particularly making the women victims speak. And I think that is very, very important, and I, I my head's off to you. And I'm there in whatever capacity I can join you. But one point where I would disagree with you, forgive me for my disagreeing, because I am also a person with my own uh, personal and ideological thought in me. That is, uh, if violence had started, it did not happen. It's not a natural calamity, right? It, it is a human-made, man-made violence, whoever has made it. And of course, there is a commission that has been made, and hopefully they will do their job. So I don't want to even talk now who has started and what. I mean, that's point. Even you were reluctant to even distinguish between the uh, violent creator and the common people. But I'm not afraid I do that. Uh, second point is coming from here, that peace cannot be in isolation, you know. I, that work has to go on and we have to encourage, and I'm always with you, please call me anytime I can render my service. But how it started, everybody who are victim must get justice, whether it's the Kuki victims or Maite victims. Otherwise that peace become empty bow because some culprits will commit mistakes deliberately and they will get away. And those who are common men face the brunt and we, we keep only doing the firefighting, that's not enough. If, and, and the point further taking to what Wasbir was raising is, is it merely a law and order problem or something beyond? And I would say, yes, it is something more it is no more limited to the law and order. Something which should have been, uh, which was a matter of law and order, third May wire was the police, right? Police did not function. Manipur police in Churachanpur did not function. Simple as that. And subsequently, whoever is the you know, forces who were supposed to maintain peace and order just did not deliver. And now the anger has multiplied and multiplied and multiplied further. Now this political agenda that comes up, which seemingly looks like, again to Hoinu, I'm sorry if I sound a little too political, please forgive me, I say once again, that this administrative, because you're doing a great job, I don't want to lose you as a friend. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to be harsh and now I don't want to lose a cookie, possible cookie friend in you. The point that I'm saying is when this violence keeps happening and certain, suddenly their, their voices come, even from the teen uh, cookie MLAs, that we need a separate administration, as if it is a consequence to something that happened. I say this is not a consequence. It was a hypothesis. It was a deductive argument you are raising that you have a statement and in order to justify that statement, there are certain points, premises that keeps coming. Because it, the way this UKLF chief has said that BJP made a promise, we helped them to win election and they have to give us the separate administration which they promised. So that means this was promise what made some five, six years ago. So whatever was happening yeah. looks like an accident. Seems to be a very well planned okay. uh, 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 activities, human made, right. made now, presenting. Now, now, so I'm submitting now, finally, uh, was just a sec, uh, uh, half a minute, that 
Now that the Maite is filled, which you said, that a real threat into the territoriality. Now, again, I say as a Maite, for us, somewhere down the line, it is maybe right or wrong, but this historicity of a close association with the land, not necessarily the land you live all the time, day to day, but somewhere I say that for the indigenous people, land is an extended self. I am Bhagat, not merely as a professor, I'm a Maite, and the land where I live, and I would like to die in the land where I'm living. I would not like to stay in Delhi and uh, spend my rest of my retired life. Land is extremely important, but that land is not sacrosanct to the extent that it is only Maites or Nagas or Kukis. We can all live together, and that is where we are. That is, that is, that is why. Why is it becoming difficult to live together? Or is 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 this the view of the groups which are asking for a separate administration? Or is I it ask now, was we? Is it, is it the I view? ask now. To those who are asking separate administration, there is an institution called assembly, Manipur State Assembly. You have 20 tribal uh, MLS, out of which 10 are cookies, 10 BJP MLS, two of them are uh, uh, cabinet rank ministers. What were they doing? If there is any plan put out in the assembly, they could have raised it. If the mighty MLA right. stop them, I they will, can use the media, absolutely. they can yes. speak out in the point, assembly. Point, point why taken. outside will, the assembly? I just want to know. Why outside the assembly? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a politician uh, from the BJP today to defend itself. But uh, but yes, I'll go for a short break. When I come back, I'll go to Chitra Antem uh, and Hoinu Housel and of course, Professor Bhagato Inam. And don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, before going to Chitra Antam, let us listen to what Manipur Chief Minister and Biren Singh had said on the 12th of June. Let's listen into Biren Singh quick, quickly before I go to Chitra Antam. Give a chance for peace. Ho gaya jo ho gaya. Ho gaya jo ho gaya to abhi peace ke chance de hai sir. Kyunki Many, you know, siblings are not getting proper education, proper health care, proper care, and many always people's portions facing struggles. We do understand what the people are, how the people are suffering in the state of Manipur due to this present crisis. My honest appeal to the people of the state. Give a chance for peace. Okay, okay, peace okay. Uh, now, now, Chitra, uh, you know, on 12th of June, Chief Minister said, Jo Hogia Hogia, forget about it. Uh, give peace a chance. Now, the focus should be on relief, treatment for those affected and injured. Now, my question is, you know, I, I want your comments on this question, which I'm, I'm asking you now. Government of India formed a 51 member peace committee head, headed by the governor of Manipur. Now, the Kokomi has pulled out, Kuki Inpi had pulled out, and uh, uh, ITLF had pulled out, and some prominent individuals like Ratan Thiam had pulled out. Now, the question is, they said that, that the Kukis say that how can Chief Minister Biren Singh, who they see as a perpetrator, be in the peace committee? My question is, he, after all, he, after all, Biren Singh is the Chief Minister of the state. He is not the Chief Minister of the Metis. Lot of people are asking, what prevents him? What prevents him from pulling out or stepping down from the peace committee? If that, if that helps, if that helps the peace committee to start work, what prevents Chief Minister Biren Singh at least to take the minimum step of pulling down from the peace committee? Is he worried that if he pulls down, it will be seen as a cookie appeasement and it might anger the Maites further? What? How do you look at it, Chitra? 
I wish I was a fly on Biren Singh's uh, wall in his house, in his official quarters, and I would know. But, uh, you know, this whole entire peace narrative, it's very, uh, I think, uh, one of the other reasons why many people are pulling out, number one, uh, especially Ratan Thiam, uh, uh, Guru Ratan Thiam, and the Kokomi also is the uh, is a very strong statement from, uh, coming from the cookies that we are not ready to talk to any uh, Meitei civil society groups. We are not ready to, uh, to sit with the government unless and until a separate administration agenda is, you know, discussed. Uh, so having said that, when and you already announced that as a certain condition, then there is no room for uh, discussions. It would only be a waste of time. So I think that uh, as to whether Biren should step down, uh, I wish it was... No, from, not, as... not from Chief Ministership. I'm asking okay. from the Peace Committee. From the uh, my... Peace Committee. See, uh, I think this is something that is best addressed by the Chief Minister himself, number one. And also we have to look at how the, the, the federal system of the Indian government, of the Indian, the constitution and how it lays down. That, uh, that you know, that, that, that yeah. when there is a committee, uh, when there is a committee and by dint of him having holding the home portfolio, he is held accountable. But we also have uh, uh, a Dongil who was uh, the police head at that point of time. And uh, there, were, there were questions raised. That if Dongal has been given another another uh, you know uh, posting or another assignment, why is it that Biren is still there? Uh, but having said that, you know it's 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 quite. I, I think we are in a catch twenty two position where catch twenty two. That is the point. Yeah, catch twenty two situation. Where, where you, even if we take off Biren from the peace committee, is it really going to save the purpose? And if it is going, okay, then some okay, should but really some, some Biren to Chitra, step from Chitra, that. some beginning yeah. has to be made somewhere. Let me go to Hoinu Hauzal. Hoinu, uh, you know, uh, is it is it is it difficult for the cookies to talk peace? Uh, is it? I don't know who, uh, whether the all cookie groups are saying. That okay, we there is no scope of talking to the government or the Mete civil society unless a separate administration is granted. Don't you think it is a hardline position? Don't you think these are two things? One, the demand. This is not the first time the demand for a separate administration or a separate a arrangement for the cookies has not started on the third of May. This demand, you see, the the SOO groups, the 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 suspension of operation agreement was signed in 2008 and after that between 2008 and now several memorandums were given by the SOO groups to the government while they were talking peace that there has to be some kind of a separate arrangement for the cookies now my question is separate arrangement the political demand is a separate demand and we are talking about the peace committee not to resolve the demand to to bring about peace in the in the immediate current context don't you see a difference there Okay, I'm just going to get back to Professor Bhagat. Professor Bhagat, don't be apologetic about having a different ideology. If we all subscribe to one ideology, the world would be a very dangerous play, space to live in. So I, I, I mean, different ideology brings in different perspectives. So I'm happy with that. On what you said about, uh, I also did read a news report wherein a Kuki militant within court where aided a certain political group to win an election, perhaps they could have bartered some agreement. That is a serious allegation that needs to be investigated by all means. And about uh, a theory of what was this pre-planned by the other party, I would also like to submit that on this side of, the, of my world, there is also a presumption that perhaps this was all pre-planned. Otherwise, a particular colony in Imphal called the Langol, why was all the house of the tribals marked in blood? There were people who came to their homes asking their ethnicity. And when they look back, I have a video and a photograph where all the hill tribes homes were actually marked in red. And the precision which which an attack was carried out on the night of 3rd May, could it be done without being prepared? So if we have to go back, I think we won't really end up anywhere. So I think both sides do have an opinion and, uh, a, 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 and you know, uh, we do feel that absolutely, it was engineered. Absolutely. Therefore, that needs to be investigated. We, right. So we leave that to the hands of people concerned to really look into that. But as far as separate administration is concerned, I don't think the Hill tribes, at least the Zomis or so, we, I don't think that was a part of the political aspiration. Now the situation was... 
it stems from being very hurt. For instance, if I look at the place where we uh, we stayed in Imphal for years, you know, my father, my grandfather lived among the Métis and, you know, we considered it home. To be driven out, there can be nothing more hurtful than that. Now there's already a geographical divide. So then what is the solution then from here on? That is the that is the mood yeah. point. That, I, I, yeah. I, I, that, that, I, I, from here on, what is it? What right is the solution? Now, that is that is exactly, a geographical divide. A clear absolutely, geographical absolutely, divide. Absolutely, absolutely. So this you know, talk of separate administration does not come from an aspiration. It comes no, from I, being pushed in the wall and perhaps right. just saying, "Put this bit away." Yeah. So if I if I'm trying we want to start, somebody to lead and guide I'm, us to see yes, what I know, is it, what's I know, the way then? Yes, I know. I know. You if I'm if I am seen as trying to cut people, my esteemed panel. If I am seen as trying to cut my esteemed panelist short, that is only for only and only for the sake of time. I time. want to bring in different viewpoints. I am coming to you, Professor Bhagat Oinam, uh, but let me welcome Dr. Letkozam Haukip, uh, Assistant Professor of History at the Guwahati University in the studios with me. Professor Haukip, I can understand that Guwahati traffic is terrible. The weather is absolutely bad. That took you a <laughs> long time from Guwahati University to reach my studios. Any case, welcome. Now, we are, we are not talking, we are not talking, Professor Haukip, we are not talking about why the violence occurred, or, or cookies are killers, or metes are killers, who started first, that is no point. Now, we are, we are basic focus of this discussion, this is my second discussion on, on the very, very frightening situation in Manipur, uh, is how to achieve peace. Now, now uh, Chitra Hantam, a journalist, well-known journalist based in New Delhi, she said, uh, she said that, you know, that the, she said that the cookie groups are saying that there can be no face-to-face -face dialogue with the Métis unless a separate administration is granted. Now, my question is, separate administration is a political demand that can't we keep? Can't we keep the political demand on one side and talk peace so that, you know, Manipur becomes peaceful now? Killings and counter-killings should stop. Houses should stop burning. And the future of the children... Uh, educational future of the children uh, is not put into further jeopardy. What are your thoughts? Do you think without a separate administration, no dialogue is possible even to even to end the current violence? Political demands will come later. Professor Haukip. Yes, uh, thank you, Vasbir, for inviting. Uh, I do not know about peace, but because both sides, you know, some uh, even Kokomi had declared national war, and the cookies also have you know, put forward their points uh, since the beginning. So uh, peace will be you know, difficult at the moment, but uh, violence should stop. You know, people should, government and uh, even the civil society, all, everybody who are on the stake, you know, all the, the stakeholders should you know, initiate to stop violence. Right. Uh, Professor Bhagat Oinam, now, now, you know, do you think that it is a administrative measures alone can bring peace in Manipur now? Uh, I'm not talking about permanent peace. Permanent peace will require a lot of political engagements. Everybody has their demands. There is a demand now for inclusion of metes in the Sindhu tribe list. There is a demand for a separate administration. That is, let's keep that aside. Now to achieve peace, do you think the government alone can do it? Because Despite the presence of 60,000 security forces, that includes the army, police, Assam rifles, and the paramilitary, other paramilitary forces, that even the, the law and order situation, I mean, it has been some kind of a control, but not fully controlled. People are still on the streets burning homes. Uh, of course, the army also is, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, fighting with one hand uh, tied because they cannot fire at a civilian population blocking the road. They cannot fire at uh, uh, a large mob coming out. Uh, they cannot open fire. It will be disaster. Now, what are your thoughts? How to defuse the current crisis without a dialogue? See, uh, let me play uh, devil's advocate. Now. Yes. Uh, not necessarily my position, but I'm just drawing up uh, a strange argument now. That, Well, uh, if peace has to be done. After every war, there is always peace. We don't endlessly fight. Uh, the war sometimes has to come to a possible logical conclusion where both the parties are weakened. Uh, they are but to come to terms with one another or one of the party is a winning party, the other lost 
and the surrender and then they come to a negotiating table this is what happens in in india pakistan war in in, in many of the battles you have seen and even in euro so if you do that if you are waiting that peace has to come uh without uh considering the con uh, conditions or aspirations and uh, that will be absurd frankly speaking after all that peace dialogue who is going to maintain i and you talk and somebody else who is headlong into getting their political agenda they will continue to create you know havoc so peace will not be meaningful unless you engage every representatives from every walk of life that is my yeah uh, but but today today hoino uh, today what professor uh, oinam is saying you have to engage every people from every walk of life but when 10 cookie mlas are not able to come uh, to the valley since the 3rd of may not able to engage in their political activity or a political face to face dialogue with their with their leaders because they have still they are still part of the parties they belong to they are still continues to be member of the uh, manipur legislative assembly they continues to be minister these two of the 10 kuki mlas are ministers and they have not been removed dropped from the ministry by the by birin singh they are still they are still ministers but they are not doing their work do you think there is a complete uh, governmental dysfunction that has that has and and even the bureaucracy uh, seems to be you know uh, uh, polarized and bureaucracy seems to be divided uh, on ethnic lines and lot of the government officers are also not in uh, uh, churachanpur or in imphal uh, depending on which community they belong to now the point is do you think in this kind of a situation uh, can anybody regain peace or is it a military solution certainly not what how do you look at it if you know was peer in order to yearn for peace there has to be a certain intent there has to be a body language there has to be sincerity there has to be transparency in a search for peace that has to come from the top and it has to trickle down you cannot demand peace you have to seek it you have to be you have to have a certain body language and many it has to be manifested in a certain body language that you want it that you you are you intend to have that the intent has to be clear so unless and until we see that coming from the top somebody has to lead us now who's the person who's going to be leading us we saw the breakdown or the derailment of two could have been a very important bodies the enquiry commission that was set up on the 4th of june and the peace committee on the 10th of june yeah were people like professor bhagat singh or people who could have been instrumental in my mind there's just one person that comes mr g k pillai unlike any other person who has been posted in north east he went out beyond his call of duty he understood he was sensitive about it why was people like gk pillai left out we need a third eye we need somebody who can help us look at it objectively why didn't why don't they engage There's so many people around There's so many people who could have been really right really uh, you know you know helpful and constructively help us paved the way why when the people looked at it even in the formation of that why when people so, thinking people of manipur right. being a part of that something right. is important absolutely and as, absolutely yeah, it touch our life so it just cannot be discussed or it just cannot be formed on a basis on a on on behalf of us we all have to be a part of it absolutely all of the chitra uh, final comments from you i'll i'll take a round from uh, uh, sure. my two other panelists uh, professor haukip and uh, professor bhagat oinam but chitra first uh, chitra you know manipur is a, the majority community let's face it uh, the metis the metis i have always been saying that they want the integrate integrity territorial integrity of manipur preserved now uh, obviously no mate can say that okay we want the entire land of manipur but we don't want certain people stay in in manipur let them go wherever they like that that cannot be the solution okay. if you if the if if the majority community is talking about integration of manipur they are they are they are very much within their right to talk about uh, preserving the integrity of manipur of course uh, like like none of us in this panel can ever say that we do not want uh, the india's integrity to be preserved that is foremost 
that's understandable now now it is not a question of mete and cookies it's don't you think it's a question of preserving the future of manipur finally final comments i mean i think i started out by saying that you know that what is happening really saddens and and, and you know makes you lose hope uh but before i come to that i just wanted to use this time and just uh clarify something that professor lepau had just said about that uh, kokomi declaring public war and i think this is just part of the problem that there is so much of uh misinformation being spread uh and i think it might be also because of the fact that news is not going uh, you know to both sides uh there was a public convention that was organized by the kokumi but it was not a national war against the cookies it was a national war against narco terrorism they said it in manipuri and maybe there might have been issues with the translation but even in the english media uh, it uh, they it emphatically says that there are two things that they said one that we declare a national war against narco terrorism in manipur and number 2 we are declaring a public emergency again when But we say public can i emergency. add something can i hang add on, something hang can hang i on, add hang on so that was an emergency where they were saying that because of the situation now we ask for people not to celebrate and go for grand celebrations that we I should realize that things are happening so that is brief. there yeah now yeah. Uh, let me let me add one more point uh there were also widely reported that in that public convention a res resolution was taken asking those who had snatched the weapons not to return them because they have to defend themselves now later on later on it was said that that resolution uh, there was some confusion that the resolution was changed but nobody again came to the media with the fresh resolution if at all so i don't know what exactly is the position i am not uh, I, have, I, i don't know what is true uh, what is I true have i have no idea okay i have the resolutions which are signed Uh, sent to me uh, by friends in the media from the IPR and doesn't mention anything about the arm. Okay, good. So if it doesn't mention anything time. about the arm, I take it no. from you. I take your point. Now let me come to Professor Lethkozam Haukip. What is the road ahead? Sorry, you came late, so you didn't get much time to speak. It's no fault of yours or mine. Uh, uh, now, now, Dr. Haukip, what are the three steps that you recommend for peace now? Because you see, uh, we we cannot. level allegations and counter allegations as all our esteemed panelists to do our thinkers in their own right and they are very very well meaning people they are reasonable people including you now my point is what are the two to three steps that you recommend immediately so that manipur comes back to normal because before the situation started we had some fantastic uh, headline grabbing events uh, held in and around imphal there was the han festival there was the g20 meeting there was the feminam is india finale there was so many manipur was in the, re, in the news for all the right reasons until this happened so what are the three steps for peace now very sure, in brief uh, number one uh, i know many people have already spoken time and again so uh, without president rule it will be difficult number one president rule should be immediately imposed in manipur and uh, because uh, uh, this can happen because uh, during the time of congress government in Uh, in uh, you know past many years when indira gandhi and other congress leader have imposed president rule in uh, india congress you know run state i think bjp government also can uh, trial this one once so second thing is all the paramilitary forces that are already employed in manipur should you know fans i mean should enter between the maitees and the cookies and try to you know Uh, try to control somehow all the violence which ever comes from uh, maybe from the valley or from the hills so and thirdly civil society also should try to restrain from all these emotional yes. driven activities yes so and uh, finally i would appeal to all my fellow men and city in manipur because i was born in manipur i was brought up in manipur i have completed my phd in manipur university so uh, i was a part of you know every civil society in manipur so i appeal to my all fellow city in you know, manipur uh, you know somehow to control our children from both the communities uh, not right. to come out not to come out to fight you know the other you know, i mean your brethren because uh, the kind of situation that is taking place from since uh, since third may had certain the long you know and 
a, a very long shared history of the Maitis and the Kukis. Maitis and Kukis are not different identities. If you look at several writings of the past, you can see both are you know the same community. Look at uh, if you look at uh, uh, I mean the uh, Walfred H. Kolf, uh, books on the periphery of Eritrean Sea, then Edwin T. Alkinson writing on the Himalayan gazetteers, descriptive ethnology of Bangor and by E. T. Dalton and John H. Hertz Indica, the country and people of India and several other writing like Taranathas, yeah. history of Buddhists and so on and so, so forth. History. I mean, the history. Yeah, the, the history. So the history of living together. Their living together has been portrayed in several books. Right. How comes, you know, wh what makes the, you know, some of the valley people or maybe the hill or, you know, these communities, so this you know, absolutely dissected from each other. Yes, yes. Uh, final comments from you, Professor Bhagat Oinam. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, pro yeah. Professor, yeah. Professor Sir Haukip saying that he has urged the civil society also to rise above emotions uh, because this is very important. It's, it's, I personally don't think it is the, the, the solution lies in the hands of the government to restore immediate peace. I think the solution lies in the hands of ordinary people like us and, and the civil society. And Professor Hawkins' appeal, rise from emotions at this juncture. Uh, final comments from you, uh, Professor yeah, yeah. Oinam. Thank you, Asbir, and uh, uh, very quickly, and I, I also agree with what Dr. Haukip said, but then you know, the greatest of the war, Mahabharat, was fought between the brothers, uh, the, you know, <laughs> the blood relations. So, so this is all that is happening, you know, cookies and maites. So who will be Pandavas and who is Kauravas, the time will only tell. But the point, what is important now for me is uh, this peace, a committee perhaps was very quickly uh, made, uh, more thought could have gone in. But to me, what I, why, uh, what I feel is the immediate necessity, and this perhaps should not be even aired out in the television, but I'm nobody so I can speak out, is that there has to be fillers. There has to be individuals either sponsored or unsponsored, voluntarily talking to both these groups. Some has some people have to invisible from the masses have to begin, Absolutely. and that is how Absolutely. only it can create ripple effect. Absolutely. Just you know, parachuting the peace committee is not <laughs> okay. going to help. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So I would suspect these fillers are already being sent. Uh, and but what my takeaway from the last comment of Professor Bhagat Vinam is his example of the Mahabharata, which were, were fought among brothers. At least there is an admission that the Kukis and the Maites are brothers, which are who are fighting each other. And the brothers, the fight between the brothers can certainly uh, be tackled. I don't think. Uh, it is something uh, that is absolutely impossible to achieve. Uh, on that note, we all want that peace should return as early as possible uh, to Manipur. And uh, panelists like you, I would like to thank all of you for talking in a very, very reasonable manner in this debate tonight. And, and I'd also like to thank the viewers for watching the show. Good night and goodbye.